good afternoon and welcome to all so our topic which coming under the methodology and instrumentation is the cold room which is the common equipment which are using in the microbiology laboratory introduction a refrigerating chamber or the cold room it is a warehouse in which a specific temperature is artificially generated it is generally designed for storing products in an environment below the outside temperature it is primarily used for the storage of materials requiring cold temperatures to prevent degradation during sample processing warm and cold rooms also refer to as environmental rooms and they are designed to control the temperature and humidity cold rooms can be can function as low as 35 degree farad and warms rooms up to 120 degree farad they are primarily used for the growth of the cells and organism storage but they are they are also used for the general chemistry and biology and another important character is they may prevent in the mold growth and abatic mold growth on environmental room surfaces this may lead to mycological contamination of research projects and it may cause potential health problems due to the inhalation of those spores so the spores can also be tracked out of the room and around the entire floor of the building minimizing the mold growth in the cold room requires the control of the moisture in the environment so we can prevent the mold growth in the cold room another important character is ventilation environmental rooms typically have a closed air circulation the only source of fresh air is when the door is opened and closed therefore the release of toxic substances from the space or the vaporization causes potential occupational health and safety hazards to the occupants next is the precautions keep door firmly shut if left open what happens the water condensation on the surface increases due to high relative humidity promoting the mold growth immediately clean up the spilled laboratory liquids for example buffers and media moisture may lead to rust corrosion or the degradation of environmental room integrity that is for example shelves promptly dispose of the wet or damp organic materials for example paper products cardboard miscellaneous trash etc the storage paper products for example kim wipes in closed plastic containers can be kept do not use or store cardboard boxes or other absorptive materials in the cold room next is the special attention to the working in the cold room the cold room work area like all other lab space needs to be booked prior to use all the workers must read and sign the associated risk assessment below commencing work before commencing the work as this is essentially a big fridge it is vital that the door is only kept open for a short period of time therefore any one wishing to carry out prolonged work must do so with door closed this of course leads to the necessity for strict safety precautions being taken when undertaking work in the cold room the workers must wear appropriate clothing ensure that you have warm clothing that will fit under a lab coat were appropriate no lawn work 
work inside the whole room must be carried out in pairs with a third person who is aware of the work outside of the cold room. The third person must be working in the basement area. Timers or alarms. Two timers must be set when the work commences. One to be kept inside the cold room and one to be kept by the third person. The timers will indicate the maximum time that the workers can stay in the cold room. And when the alarm sounds, the workers must take a minimum of 30 minutes break. 30 minutes break. The person outside of the cold room must ensure that the workers are out. The contained atmosphere in the environmental room and the recirculation of most of the air creates a potential for retaining aerosols that are formed during research procedures. This can lead to cross-contamination of the research projects and personal exposure. So, keep these rooms as clean as possible. No dry ice, liquid nitrogen or compressed gas present in the cold room. This may displace oxygen and may cause a suffocation hazard. If compressed gases other than breathing air or oxygen is essential, contact Office of Health and Safety, OHS, about identifying the correct oxygen or gas sensor and local alarm. Post the alarm procedure and train all the room users to it. No flammable liquids. Example, solvents, alcohols. Their vapors can accumulate, creating an explosive atmosphere which can be ignited by electrical switches or other ignition sources. No hazardous or volatile chemicals. Example, chloroform, carcinogens, reproductive toxins, acutely toxic chemicals. So, this type of chemicals are not kept in the cold room. No volatile acids, which can corrode metals. No food or beverage, which may become contaminated. No cardboard, wood, cloth or paper. Example, boxes, pallets, shelves. These cellulose materials support mold growth that can contaminate research materials or be carried and spread to other areas. Next is about the general policy on the use of the cold room. Clearly labeled materials must be placed within the shelves number crates. Large monoliths and intact coals waiting for processing will have a designated and secure floor space area. All the materials held in the archive must have a valid reason for acquiring long-term storage. All samples must be compact, clearly labeled and recorded on the cold store database. Storing small samples in large half-empty containers must be avoided. Upon placing a crate, the workers must record the location and the detail of samples and inform the labs, lab staff who will record all the details in the cold store list spreadsheet and place a current copy on the cold room door. The log sheet must remain on the cold room door at all times. It, prov it provides all users with the location and the details of the samples held in crates. It should be accessible by all workers. It is essential that the samples can be found by others, not just the person who placed them in the store. All the samples removed from the individual crates or for processing must be returned to their original crate. 
If placed in another crate, what happens? The details must be recorded as before. The information in the cold room spreadsheet log will be updated monthly. So there should be a monthly updation. No samples are to be placed in the cold store without the permission of the lab staff responsible. No long term storage of material is allowed in this room unless previously agreed with the lab staff. And also no flammable materials are to be stored in this cold room. It is advisable to request crates well in advance of projects, staff dates, as these crates can be filled quite quickly if there is a high number of projects running. Access should not be necessary out of the normal working hours and is by the key only. Thank you.